Welcome, everybody, to episode 85, the title, Putin Killed Navalny. That title comes from our friend Dmitry Kovigan, who worked on two of Navalny's campaigns, and he would like the West to know that we must consider the proximity of our own misfortune before it's too late. Dmitry Kovigan, we are so grateful that you have joined us. Uh, we feel it's very, very important that we get as much truth out to our audience as is absolutely possible. And Hi-Fi, why don't you kick us off with uh, the title of this particular episode and why why we chose it? The title of this episode is Putin Killed Navalny, because that's the truth. It doesn't matter if he died of whatever because of he was in prison. No, um, Putin killed Navalny intentionally. And let's just start there. Why don't you tell our viewers you worked with the man on multiple campaigns, why did Putin uh, make this move? Why did Russia feel the need to kill this incredible opposition leader? Uh, first of all, uh, hi, guys, uh, to everyone. Uh, Putin killed Navalny because uh, uh, Putin is always was uh, about control. Uh, he is a uh, KGB guy. And uh, as he told many times, uh, the KGB officer cannot be uh, retired, you know. And uh, it means uh, uh, the the uh, secret service of KGB means they watch uh, after activists, politicians, any kind of oppositionists, and uh, they suppress during uh, USSR. And uh, that's what he, he know how to do. Uh, you can find on internet uh, some photos when uh, Putin staying and watching how uh, other policemen uh, detain uh, catching uh, another opposition. It, it, uh, it was old photo, maybe from 90s, maybe from early, uh, late 80s. And th that's why Putin uh, didn't change, he cannot change his nature. That's why he uh, watch over opposition and uh, his uh, methods, practice and approach. Uh, it's a uh, uh, it's exactly what he uh, know how to do, yes. and uh, and uh, he cannot be another person. You know, yes. it's always came from our experience. It depends what we bring uh, from our previous experience to our new job. And if you was a bad person, or you did uh, bad things, you probably have a uh, habits for it. And Thank it's, you. We, that. that was so important. Now what I want to do is let our viewers know your experience when Navalny came on your radar in 2009. Uh, Navalny was a very important uh, person. And uh, like uh, he was a uh, person and politician who established the standards. Uh, what uh, probably didn't exist uh, before him uh, in Russian politics and uh, uh, was lost in Russian society uh, during long, uh, during generations. And, um, uh, but how uh, I was inspired by him. Uh, it was uh, uh, 2009, uh, I was a student uh, 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 and live in the dormitory and uh, one friend of mine uh, who studied uh, politics and uh, at university uh, he told me you know uh, there is a guy uh, you should know about him and uh, I study uh, human resource management and uh, you know I always was uh, curious uh, about uh, human personalities and especially about politics uh, who can represent uh, me because I didn't have a uh, choices uh, to vote, uh, to give my vote for someone on elections. And uh, elections was uh, very important for me during long time because in 1999, uh, Putin came to power. Uh, but unfortunately for uh, me, uh, I got my right for vote only in 2000. And uh, at that moment, during the presidential election, uh, I still didn't 
uh, had a voice right for for void and uh, uh, Putin uh, uh, took uh, steps to suppress and con uh, put under control the media uh, uh, the politics and uh, the financial system and uh, under his own uh, personal control and uh, I didn't I didn't have a representation for myself you know I cannot mm -hmm. find the, the right person who can stand against Putin uh, it's it's it can be uh, Boris Nemtsov but Boris Nemtsov uh, unfortunately uh, support uh, Putin on his first election it was not his personal decision, but it was a decision of his party, what he supported. And uh, uh, during the long time, uh, I just uh, keep looking. And uh, in 2009, when I was in Moscow, uh, one friend of mine told me, you know, there is a guy and his name is Alexei Navalny. And... Uh, it, it's 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 a it's a good uh, details to know that uh, I was uh, in age probably twenty nine, uh, and uh, I live in a dormitory. Uh, I was during the getting my uh, master degree uh, in human resource management, and uh, the friend of mine he was uh, he studied politics in the same university. And of course, you know much more about promising new figures. And um, I started watching over uh, Navalny activity. It was an uh, anti-corruption investigation on uh, his personal website. And uh, he, he catch uh, my attention because he was not just uh, some journalist who exposed the problem. Uh, he tried to put in a some action after that. Uh, he tried to involve other people. Uh, to, uh, he tried to be a voice for other people. Uh, and uh, many people maybe right now can criticize him that he was uh, not uh, super uh, efficient, but uh, like catch the right, uh, uh, catch cage the right right problem for regular uh, Russians and regular Russians they are poor and uh, I think uh, it was a, a right bit from his side because he put uh, attention of Russian society that government and probably there is no gamer government in general uh, understanding how we understand it uh, in yeah. common sense it's yeah because Putin controls government yeah. and uh, these things like uh, he starts watching or he put attention of Russian people to the stealing of money from the state companies, all companies and uh, the, it was uh, it, 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 it was so meaningful for Russian people you know because uh, they start uh, thinking, okay, someone constantly stealing money. We don't see improvement in our life. Moscow was a, a different and still different uh, city from different reality from uh, whole Russia because uh, the vast majority of the cities in Russia, uh, they, uh, the salaries of people there, uh, the opportunities uh, for pursued uh, career goals, um, career goals, n not so good. And um, people uh, just leave the small towns and uh, the provinces and go to the center, to the Moscow. And uh, when Navalny tried to dig deeper uh, what the roots of the problem, mm -hmm. he started to expose the uh, stealing problem uh, from from the budget, and uh, it it was done by uh, state companies, state oil companies, and uh, people was outraged. 
In 2011, it was a uh, uh, huge uh, falsifications of what was catched on cameras uh, during uh, Russian elections. Go uh, when go people elect the government, and um, at that moment, people came to the street. It was huge protest there. And uh, Putin was worried about, but uh, it was uh, Putin was prime minister at that time. Of course, it's just formal prime minister. Uh, I believe he was he was in charge still, because uh, uh, after that protest in 2011, you should understand, uh, came next uh, the uh, March election in two, uh, 2012, and uh, the people. Uh, wasn't ready uh, to elect Putin because uh, Putin didn't do his uh, presidential rally before. Before, and at the same time, uh, in 2011, he he was just like introduced by Medvedev, uh, like it will be the the the, the next president. I support him. And uh, you should support him, you know. And wow. if you, your current president says say something like that, you know, and uh, it's some kind of transition of power again, and uh, people just didn't have a, a chances to elect an opposition leaders. So it's really important that you return to 2011 because that is a time of mass protest, as you were saying. That is a time when Hillary Clinton, as Secretary of State, was saying that the Russian elections needed to be investigated. And that is when Putin obviously uh, went after her with all the might of, you know, his uh, KGB cronies. Uh, there was a great line around that time from... Um, another opposition leader, Boris Nemtsov, who said, my goal is to liberate Russia from crooks and thieves. And in that period of time, there did seem to be that opportunity. And when you first volunteered for Navalny, you have pictures of the campaign teams and, and you could be public. You could actually, you know, be public in your opposition to Putin's regime and when did that stop? When when did you realize that uh, this this window, this opportunity to still try to defend uh, your country from the kleptocracy and the the mafia tactics of Putin? When was that moment when you realized how serious it was and how you might actually be risking your life as a volunteer? Um, this feeling was uh, for us. First, first moment. Uh, it was not scaring of something, but if you live in, in uh, Russia, you should be careful. Of course, if you're not the young person in age of seventeen, because uh, you estimate the you calculate your risks. And uh, in 2013, uh, it's it was for me uh something what i want to do because you know you you cannot be just waiter on on your election if you don't have a candidate and uh, it was uh, in 2013 the election of, of mayor of moscow and uh, navalny the the day before he starting his campaign was put in a jail and just because of pe people protest, he was released from the jail. What was strange because uh, the it was appeal from the side of the uh, general prosecutor that Navalny can be released because it's a prohibited right of waiters, you know, uh, from the prison already. Uh, he put uh, in prison by the court decision. And uh, we understand it's, this is the last moment, you know. We know this guy, we trust this guy, we should support him. And uh, Mayor of Moscow campaign was so important for Russian society. And so many talented people was involved in this. Um, it was technologically advanced. Uh, we, we, we have an application with a map, with map, with streets, with uh, buildings, and we do campaign task on, the, on this application, you know. Uh, I interviewing people on the streets, 
uh, doing a polls uh, because Navalny uh, want to have a statistics how he, he doing really among the people who will elect him. And uh, uh, he lost this election, but it, it was a, a huge campaign of dignity because I was proud on myself, you know? I, I tried, don't tell not so many people, and only uh, the friend of my, mine, I told her, you know, I participate on this, you know? <laughs> and it, it was like, uh, I don't know how, partisanship or something like that, you know, when you uh, do your work uh, secretly. <laughs> and uh, uh, it, it, it was not shame for me because at my previous company, uh, everyone support Navalny, you know? They, they, they went to uh, marches, pr 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 protests, and, uh, but it, it, it was still feeling of fear in Russia. And it was important time, to note. It was important to note that he still managed to get twenty-seven percent of the vote, despite the oppression. Despite, as you said, hit them banning him from television, he and and or being only mentioned in derogatory ways, he still was able to get his message out. Where he still managed to get a third of the vote, which is remarkable considering uh, the type of oppression that you're describing. Yes, high five. So you mentioned earlier about Putin's habits and that he brought them uh, from the KGB with him into the presidency. And one thing I know about uh, Russia is there have been a lot of murders. Uh, Putin is a murderer, right? I mean, Nemtsov, uh, Litvinenko, um, uh, Anna, the journalist, I can't remember her last name right now. Anna Politkovska? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah Natalia Putin, Istimirova as well. Yeah. yeah, in, yeah. He, he's a murderer. And, and, and not only is he murdering in Russia, but he's murdering outside of Russia. I mean, they killed an innocent woman in the, the Skripal poisoning, right? Why do you think? Why do you think the world allows Putin to continue this way? Are they afraid really, of him? Or? <laughs> it's, it's a good question uh, because... It's 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 hard uh, to to understand just because we, we, we can try to find explanation for it. Uh, for example, the politician who right now in power they thinking okay, uh, I just uh, will say something about it. Was it we not happy? Uh, we uh, condemn. We uh, against it. But uh, do something, it means to take responsibility, you know? And uh, at the same time, uh, it was no understanding that uh, repression in Russia going through the long, long time, that uh, all Russian uh, events, uh, ac accidents, I don't know how to say, but uh, Catastrophes? Yes. Catastrophe, yeah. Uh -huh, catastrophe. They, they, they was uh, deeply connected with, uh, at least with fail of security services. Mm -hmm. But we, we believe that it was much deeper involvement, you know? And um, uh, you should understand what also don't understand Russian people and the Russian oppositions, oppositioners, that uh, 19... 37 is the year of uh, mass murdering uh, in Soviet Russia yeah. during Stalin era. Yeah. And um, I can say that uh, 1937 year came to different oppositioners in a different time. We cannot say that uh, killing started uh, uh, after Navalny poisoning, you know? Just because it's it's of course it's much more visible for media for everyone for politicians, but you never know your real risk until you will be hit by this car of repression. What you said just touched me so deeply about how you were so proud of working on a campaign, but you couldn't advertise it because of the uh, you know the fear of repercussions and. 
I was a campaign manager in 2022 and it was the second time I worked on a high profile campaign and I could not advertise that I was working on it because I have a designated army attacking everything that I do online. And I am absolutely horrified and frightened at the parallels of what's come here. When Hi-Fi asked, why is there nobody standing up to Putin? I think it's because of their two main exports, petrol and lies. And the fact is that those lies are infecting the minds of Americans. And as somebody who worked uh, multiple times with the opposition leader, Alexei Navalny, how can you tell Americans that they don't want what is happening in Russia? How can we tell those people who are under influence of Russian lies sold to them as patriotism that they don't want that? Um, everyone, thank you for this question uh, because uh, it's so important uh, to understand what you can do. And um, back to my experience, uh, I can say that uh, first of all, uh, you need to be uh, kind to other people, not just uh, to, to do donations or something like that, uh, but uh, support emotionally. Uh, people who do a dangerous job, and uh, if a uh, job is dangerous, it should be discussed. Why uh, people cannot be uh, uh, openly go to campaign, and uh, uh, maybe it, it 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 should be uh, some kind of investigator from the government. Of course, I don't want to uh, put a responsibility from personal responsibility to the government, but at the same time. Uh, people should demand from government that uh, the level of violence, la level of violence in speech uh, should be decreased. And uh, when I, I ask my American friend why the American politicians uh, making a jokes about each other, it's 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 like constantly big part of campaign. It's not just uh, uh you know someone stupid and someone tells something back no it's co constantly mocking uh another person uh and uh say that uh, he, he is bad guy you know and people should criticize the ideas not the personalities and um, uh i don't know why uh american um scientist uh psychologist uh, didn't help uh, society to go through these uh, obstacles because, as I know uh, from my experience in the HR field, uh, that uh, American companies are much more advanced in the training of their employees. And when uh, I looking on YouTube, uh, YouTube TV show, your podcast, I see how much time you put and efforts to understand the motives and uh, emotions and uh, the nature of personality because you want to predict actions you know and uh, or just explain the actions but at the same time uh, the society should be uh, fixed uh, the, the the not narratives but the style of rhetorics because yeah. when i ask I'm sorry. Uh, when I ask my friend, uh, my American friend, why is politician not serious? And when it's happened, he told me it's it's happened in nineties. You know, and uh, this is wrong because you cannot just uh, uh, be a judge for everyone. You know, yeah. you should take a part and uh, take a part responsibility. The end responsibility of politician it's also teach the avoiders, and uh, it's exactly what Navalny did, and uh, he show his moral values, and uh, he, he told okay, he to set up a goals. Of course, it's economical goals and everything, but he also set up uh, moral goals. You know, and uh, there is no leadership without moral leadership. You know. 
in the world, in the country, everywhere. Uh, what you said is really important about moral leadership and kindness. And I just want to bring up something that relates to disinformation, which is the heart of what we do on this show. My friend Ann Nelson wrote a book called Red Orchestra. It was about the circle of friends in Berlin who, who ran the resistance against Hitler. And there's multiple things that relate to, I think, the story that you're telling us. But one of the things that she said that was so important was those who got executed got executed twice. Once, the first time they were executed by Hitler and the Nazis, as Navalny was. And the second time, it was their legacies that got assassinated. The, the way they disparaged them by dis dismissing them as communists, uh, anything that they could say to make them uh, not be as valuable and their valiance and their bravery is as valuable. And when people ask me why Navalny went back to Russia after being poisoned and why he didn't stay in the West, my response is because that's what a courageous man does. And your beautiful response was he did not want to leave people alone with Putin. And he also wanted to be true to his word. Right now, across the, the, the globe, all of the troll factories are disparaging Navalny, cherry picking things he said a decade ago, things that he has changed his mind on over the course of time. What would you like people to know about Navalny and why are you so proud to have worked on two campaigns with him? Navalny was a decent person and he was a, a human being uh, uh, in a, his best glory, you know, because everyone make, mi mis make mistakes and uh, Navalny tried to be connected with everyone in Russia. Uh, if if it's a decent person, Navalny definitely want to speak with this person or represent him. And he, represents means uh, worry about his uh, this this person problem, or really worry, not just do it because he want to be elected. And uh, Navalny uh, w was a uh, some kind of. Uh, I don't, I don't know how to say, but uh, Navalny not was not na not natural for Russia <laughs> for a long time. How you can ex uh, expect someone who stands against the evil and uh, who definitely understands the risks? Of course, coming back of Navalny maybe was not the wisest decision, and uh, right now we can understand it understand it but at the same time um navalny keep trying d during the time and he was very um inventive person i don't know well he was a person of arts uh, he he accepts the ideas and he proposed suggests the ideas you know and uh, and uh, he uh brings them to life to the projects and uh, it was definitely never was done before him he, his campaign was uh, so technologically advanced mm -hmm. he involved so many people and uh, he want to make a real changes and what i want to say to american people and uh, people of the world um you can be uh, this kind of navalny maybe with a little bit different smaller risk level of risks, but at the same time, you can do your projects, you know? And uh, Navalny projects was uh, about solving people pro problems. For example, uh, he uh, put uh, uh, some kind of, uh, if you wanna appeal something uh, or, again, or demand something from Russian government, uh, you should uh, put uh, a, 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 statement to police or to the uh, uh, government, uh, local government, and uh, you should fill the papers. You know, it's usually work of the lawyers. Not so many people know how to do it. And Navalny, he was a lawyer back in the day. And he uh, has, and uh, he, his uh, team is still exist. The team of lawyers who uh, uh, take this part from the people and 
create an online platform for uh, appellation, I don't know how to say, but to, to put um, official claims against uh, government uh, problems. I don't know how to say. So, yes, so, even, so even after his death, there is a team of lawyers who are handling things for the Russian people to petition right. their government. Yes. And he put that infrastructure in place. High five. Um, I know I have multiple questions I still want to ask, but you go next. Okay. So one thing I know about Putin and Russia, uh, Putin has a lot of billionaires under his thumb, his oligarchs like Deripaska, Rybolovev, Uzmanov, all these people. Uh, they, they work in this mafia type setting uh, you know, they, they have these businesses and they're connected to the Bratva. And one thing I keep trying to tell people here in America is we have that same kind of billionaire problem. How did Navalny see the corruption of the billionaires in Russia? And what did he say to the people? I mean, I know he did the documentary on Putin's palace, Important. but what did he say about the, the other uh, oligarchs and how to, how to stop them? Uh, first of all, he uh, he exposed them. Yeah, what they bad deeds and uh, what was uh, their corruption to the government. It's not. It was not just business deals. The Russian oligarchs made monies from the deals with government, and it was shady monies, you know. And it 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 was a lot of bribes, and he exposed the corrupt politician first. But at the same time, he exposed the connection with the oligarchs. And um, what we, we saw in Russia and uh, how one oligarch, for example, Usmanov, uh, who is a citizen of uh, Uzbekistan, is former Soviet Union country, but at the same time, he's doing business in Russia and he's pu putting a lie. And uh, this oligarch, uh, he, he bought a social media network, uh, VK, of contact, you know, he put it under control and he bought a uh, uh, mail that, platform. That reminds me of Elon Musk and Twitter. Yes, mm -hmm. this is correct. Of course, I understand this is risky to say it, but it's it's definitely something what, what, what we can find the par parallels. Yes. Links with that. Because... Um, Buying a Twitter for controlling it, it's yeah. its definitely a dangerous thing. But also we should understand uh, how he make money. I don't know a lot about uh, a lot of um, his business, but what I know is that he got a lot of, uh, he was subsidized from the government for producing yeah. cars, you know? Yeah. And uh, it was exceptional. Uh, subsidies yeah. i don't know how to say but you know they put money in him and it means when this guy takes so much power he, he start doing the politics you know and this is dangerous because he can be advanced and successful in his business but he definitely don't know uh, many things about politics but he have a money what you said was very important and also we've exposed on this show multiple times with our network of allies how uh, how embedded Elon Musk's money is not only in government contracts, but in a history of Russian oligarch money as well. So we are not surprised that he is uh, passing messages uh, for Putin uh, through Twitter. Um, I did a series called American Monsters, which we'll talk about afterwards, because I would love to know your thoughts on why so many of the people who are pro-Putin are actually still free in America. I think that is a big, huge problem. Uh, my friend Keir Giles says that the poisonings that we've seen with Russia, the defenestrations that we've seen under Putin's uh, you know, reign would be perfectly normal 600 years ago, but this is not 600 years ago. And yet you yourself campaigning happily for Navalny in 2017 experienced what you think is a poisoning and I'd like you to tell our viewers about that in the hopes that one of our medical professionals might be able to hear you and help you. Um, yes, 
thank you for asking me about it. And um, it was the uh, end of campaign. It was the end of November 2017. And during this campaign, I was a uh, uh, public person. Uh, in comparison to the first campaign with uh, Mayor of Moscow, I did a lot of uh, online media publication and uh, I, I did uh, interviews. And uh, I cannot expect that someone decide to uh, poison uh, the activist, the volunteer. And, uh, but uh, I can find an explanation just because of previous disappearance or strange death of uh, opposition figures or people connected with the opposition. Uh, sometimes people die in dur uh, during their trip in a train and uh, suddenly and uh, in young ages, uh, under 45, you know, and it, it was not like person who have a problem with heart constantly, you know, like um, chronic diseases. And um, I can say that I, I was poisoned because <laughs> it sounds crazy. Yes. Because first of all, I got the symptoms, but the second one, uh, I saw I saw uh, an action or actions of the poisoners. Uh, I saw a phase one poisoner because um, I went I met with my two friends um, in a restaurant, and uh, we spoke a lot. Maybe we we uh, speaking together during one hour, uh, one hour and a half. But um, the most most idea for us was not eat a food, but just drink, uh, have a conversation. And uh, we had the tea, and we have a cupcakes, chocolate cupcakes, muffins. I'm I'm not sure about the kind of it, but. Um, when uh, we finish our tea pot, because we drink in, uh, we like drink hot tea in Russia uh, during meetings, you know, it's not cold tea. And uh, we, uh, I ask a waitress, uh, please refill this uh, green tea tea pot with boiled water, just because we're doing this, because it's green tea, you can do multiple times and it still will be tasty, you know? And, um, uh, she told me, okay, I will do it. And when she she started turning away uh, her plate with uh, our tea pot out of us, just turn her back, someone catch her by elbow. And I saw it by my side vision. You know, it's, it's strange someone put her uh, uh, hand to stop her. And it's uh, like you, you, uh, you see it's, it's not natural movement stop someone, catch for elbow. And uh, she was not surprised, what was surprisingly for me. And uh, the person asked her, where you take this tea pot? Exactly these words. And uh, it's a strange question. But she also asked him, uh, answer to him, what's strange for me. I will take to refill it and I will bring it back. You know? Wow. And uh, it's definitely strange when waitress to give an explanation uh, to another person about others, people, uh, stuff, you know. And uh, she, she go out and she bring maybe after five uh, minutes the tea pot. But the person who sat behind me, who stopped this waitress, uh, he, he went in, in front of us a little bit aside, but he, he stand there and watch how we drink our tea after that. Staring during maybe half an hour until the end of our meeting, just staring on us. I saw it just by side vision. I, I don't want to give him a hint that I, I saw him, you know? And I just refill my cup on uh, to third. And I just show, um, make an exp expression that uh, um, I play the role, you know, like I'm drinking. I, like I sip it, but I'm not. I, I didn't, and I start to tell my friends we should go. We have a plan. So we need to do purchases for Mother Day. You know, buy presents. And um, 
yeah, and uh, after that, we left, uh, uh, maybe 30 minutes after we left uh, this place, uh, when I turn, I, I, I look closer on the uh, face of this guy. And um, of course, my memory is uh, deteriorated, you know, through the time, memories. Uh, but anyway, I can uh, uh, approximately to, to describe him. And after that, of course, I got uh, multiple symptoms. And uh, I lay down s s s three days without um, any kind of power in my muscles. And uh, at the same time, uh, uh, I, co I constantly awake. And uh, many other symptoms, what I described in the spreadsheet, what uh, available uh, online. Yes. Yeah. And um, I was able just go to the, I'm sorry, to the restroom and uh, do a cooking for myself and, and went to the bed. And, uh, uh, and, and it's yeah. not like it's not like you could go to a doctor in Russia and say, hey, this happened to me. You couldn't really trust people, correct? Like this is something where if it happens to you, yes. you know, yes. it's not it's not like you're free to just go find the best doctor in Moscow. Yes. You should understand what what uh, the previous events was. Uh, I got um, threats uh, personally from the police officer during our uh, promotion um, event when we uh, give a people give away people leaflets, you know, present a program of candidate, and um, uh, the threat was that we will start close you guys uh, behind the bars uh, after uh, after December. Uh, when December will come, yeah. and the next threat, tra tra it, it was maybe in August or September. You know, they they, they start putting threats, uh, and she told me privately uh, when I I went too far away from other guys. You know, and yeah. she should protect our from other guys because her job was protect our event. Yeah, uh, and um, she she put these threats, but. Also, uh, I got and I and seven people uh, who protest during Navalny detention at the end of uh, October. Uh, we protest and uh, I uh, held uh, my own protest. Uh, I, I gave a speech to the main opposition radio about we are blaming uh, Putin in political association, uh, assassination uh, in murdering of um, journalists and uh, suppress uh, the right of people, uh, the rights. And uh, I told, uh, for, for example, that uh, the Navalny uh, not murdering, but, but the physical violence towards Navalny uh, case was not investigated. And uh, it was during his presidential campaign. And of course, I represent my candidate. And, um, I talking about his problem, but uh, the reason why uh, I, I went with the poster and poster was the uh, uh, humanity against crime, you know, because I it, it was a message to the government. Of course, they don't listen, but in general, uh, that uh, if they don't kind to to, to the people, it's bring a violence. On many levels, and uh, first of all, violence came from their them. They show they do, did it, you know. And P Putin always not happy when someone catch him uh, for the hand, you know. Uh, and um, uh, the reasons why I went with this uh, poster uh, because uh, it was murdering attempt of Russian journalists. Uh, who belongs to the same opposition radio station. And um, he was, uh, I don't know, stabbed, I don't, I'm not good in English yeah, uh, words, right. uh, by knife to his her, her throat, you know? Someone tried to cut her throat mm -hmm. of oppositional journalist. Mm -hmm. And she, she support Navalny too, you know? But I was surprised why uh, journalist community in Russia not protest don't go mass protest. Yes, of course, some of them who, who, who uh, knew this journalist in person, uh, she, they went to protest. And fortunately, she's alive, you know? And uh, 
but it was the reason for me uh, do, don't be silent it, yes. not about something abstract about uh, specific details about specific case and uh, the case it's among many others and after uh, my speech at the same time when uh, journalist take this interview on his video camera i was filmed by uh how to say fsb not fsb it's it's some kind of subdivision uh, of, three, or, a three letter agency affiliated with russian yeah, affiliated. yeah it's a agency with um, fight against extremism but it, it belongs to to fsb not formally but um, um informally but and uh, i was filmed by them too on their video camera you know they won't catch my whole interview mm -hmm. and uh, i i was not afraid because i know that i need to say these words and uh, after three days to uh, seven people maybe eight uh, I, I can be wrong for one person um police came to our house during two days at mornings just because they want to uh, give us a notification uh that uh, we should avoid any kind of extremistic activity and and these papers i was like others pro pro proclaimed like organizer of pro mass protest events the header uh, was claims that you know yeah. and the first day i, I uh, signed it and told guys i'm not organizer but if you want i, I can write down please go away and, and the second day when they come to me I told no guys and I feel them feel on camera I'm not organizing I don't want to uh, be uh, responsible for any kind of uh, mass protest events what you will try to blame me for that in yes. the court and right. uh, they did it not only me uh, it was early morning came to seven people at the same time at the same moment and it was like uh, it was threat we should understand it you know yeah. it's like no it's it's not searches but it's a, at the same time it's police visit for law-abiding person it's yes. intimidation is what yes. it is yeah. they're, yes. they're trying to threaten you they're trying to scare so, you yes, this, this way definitely i know we only have a couple more minutes and i'm so grateful first of all i'm so grateful that you lived through this and i'm so grateful that you lived through it to tell your story i have two more important things i want to get from you it could be a lightning round you can give us your your fast responses if you need to. Um, I do a series for my Betty Dangerous Substack called American Monsters, and I have written about Paul Manafort and Roger Stone and Donald Trump and Steve Bannon and Alex Jones and Peter Thiel, uh, Eric Prince, um, Tucker Carlson, Mike Flynn, and all of them, all the people I just mentioned are carrying Putin's water in America. As we, as we know, Tucker Carlson was just there uh, promoting Putin like the propagandist he is. What would you like to tell these men who I believe are traitors uh, because I believe that they are in an alliance with a war criminal and a murderer? What would you like to tell these people in America who are promoting Putin about the reality of what you know? they just destroy countries they destroy the idea of democracy uh because i want to say someone uh, who can maybe uh i i had uh, some kind of uh distant connection the paul Manafort, Manafort i dated with one girl in the russian orthodox church who was a spy during uh Yanukovych election in 2010 or 2009 and she she's Russian by citizenship and she doesn't have uh, relatives in Ukraine but she was a part of election campaign the main uh, headquarter of uh, Yanukovych and her occupation is translator and uh, it's definitely strange when she support the pro-russian uh, president on this campaign like uh, he, 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 like be a part of his stuff and uh, uh, especially strange because she not involved at any politics in russia at all and uh, i think this 
cases should be investigated because uh, and um, maybe president should decide and maybe Congress should decide. I don't know who in charge here, but uh, some uh, connections with uh, Russian intelligence uh, officers should be exposed despite its uh, secret information, I understand it, but it should be exposed because uh, people should understand that Russian intelligence working on different levels. I met the girl and I dated her. That's why I know so much, so many details about her. I didn't know that she involved in any kind of uh, spy activities, but she went to uh, during the Ukrainian revolution of dignity to uh, to the in the February of 2014. She was there during the mask uh, hitting and battle with police. And uh, she was undercover. She found among, among 200 people via Skype, the American, the American policeman. And she went to, to, to this, uh, to, uh, to Ukraine, uh, to Ukraine uh, during the revolution with him in February 2014. And you, of course, uh, no one asked you a question if you have a boyfriend who is American, you know? And uh, her, her last name is also sounds like pretty Ukrainian name, Dubovchenko, you know? And uh, it means, okay, uh, what this person, uh, and she, she faked her American applica application for American visa, you know? And I'm not happy to say uh, in public it, you know, but it takes time to me to, to look after um, inaction from uh, American government, you know. Of course, uh, uh, they should take an action early and prevent this kind of activity. And uh, this girl went to Russian Orthodox Church as a, a teacher there. And you know, this teacher, you, you cannot proclaim yourself like teacher. You should be appointed by a priest and it should be some kind of background che check for that. Dimitri, this is the part in the interview where we always ask if you'd be willing to come back. And also we appreciate the fact that you are taking a risk talking to us. Uh, Hi-Fi and I knew from the moment we started the show and we were you know, uh, attacked so hard, the risks that we take, but we want you to know how much we appreciate you bringing us this very important information to an American audience. As Hi-Fi knows, I'm doing a series uh, re-investigating the 2016 election, and you're 100% correct. All the prosecutions feel to me like what we call a limited hangout, lying to Congress, lying to the FBI. What about espionage? What about throwing the election to a Putin asset? What about looking at what happened in Ukraine under Yanukovych? So thank you. Yes, we need an investigation. And a former president, Jimmy Carter, said a full investigation would would show that Trump did not win the election and that he was put into power with the help of Russian military intelligence. So I want to thank you for that. My final question to you is when Navalny was asked uh, about, about the fact that he was risking his life, he said, my message for the situation when I'm killed is very simple, don't give up. And I turned to you and I said, you know, is it you who now has to carry the torch? And you wrote these very beautiful words back to me. I believe that everyone who knew Navalny has to carry the responsibility. I decided for myself, I don't plan to die for Russia or Russian sleepy people because I don't have a hope for sustainable changes in Russia at this moment. But I definitely want to serve for a free world in case to share knowledge and thoughts how to make Russia not dangerous for other countries. That is what you did here today by coming on our show. You, by giving so freely of your thoughts, have helped us message to American people and other people who watch us in the West and globally the dangers of what can come if we allow this murderer, this war criminal, 
and his cronies to continue doing this type of harm to our world? And what is the final message you would like to leave Americans with and truly actually our global audience? Um, I want to, first of all, thank you, uh, Heidi, for uh, everything what you guys doing and um, Hi-Fi as well, because uh, this is so important. This work uh, should be done by someone, and you are the person who is uh, someone. And uh, at, the same t at the same time, uh, we should put a light in front of us. Uh, what what's the reason why we're doing everything? You know why? Um, w what kind of settings we want to have around? If we don't care, we can live in democracy. We, we can live in autocracy. Live in autocracy. You know, but it can be named like democracy in Russia. You know, but factually, it will be autocracy and dictatorship finally, and fascism at the end what right we we see right now and uh, people uh, should understand that democracy it's not just given it's it's privilege and uh, everyone is so fortunate and uh, when i speak with americans they understand it and uh, you have a lot of blessings and god bless america because in the bible it's told you should bless the blessed one and um, but at the same time, uh, if you have such good condition to be a human uh, and uh, express yourself in a different way, you should use your power, your ability uh, for protect uh, the democracy. Because Americans like to tell, I like democracy so much. I, I, I don't want to give away to, to someone. N never okay it means you should take an action on on your own understanding uh, and educate yourself too of course uh, but be kind to others too because navalny was always kind to others you know but he hate uh, to face people uh, to tongues people you know he watch over the actions and uh, what f is be doing in russia they uh, like to disintegrate, uh, and they uh, do many things against Russian opposition. They uh, disrupted, uh, they put the agents uh, during mass protest, what I testified as well in my uh, testimony about poisoning. And um, if you don't do nothing, government became, uh, can became in each country uh, to get so much control and uh, it's not uh, what means control it's not means to be more efficient like talking Tucker Carlson thinking about Russia streets are clean you know she he didn't think about people how they're living uh, what's what's happened with poor people and uh, the le level of poorness uh, how many people are poor in Russia yes. and uh, it means for this visual perfect image uh government suppress opposition yeah. and uh you should st st stay for 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 your rights you, sh you should exercise democracy you know yeah. and it's exactly what i studying from you americans you know mm -hmm. i try to exercise democracy exercise my rights you know st stands for what is right and instead you and, got poisoned mm -hmm. yes yes and it's it was a problem in Navalny too because when he came back to Russia, he count that uh, before the Biden inauguration, Putin will, will not be so uh, uh, so risky. Mm -hmm. But Putin didn't care, and put, uh, Navalny count on some kind of real action from uh, Western countries, from America, you know, yeah. to protect him or something like that. But like Crimea, they give up just. Mm -hmm. And before you make a deal, please, guys, ask a politician. It's a, it's a right deal with the right person, at least, you know, mm -hmm. because the uh, deal with restart of uh, communication, I don't know, rest the restart uh, relations with Russia in 2008, it was a huge mistake. Mm -hmm. I like Obama. 
I like Michael my fault, mm -hmm. but you you cannot deal with monsters, you know, mm -hmm. just because. You can't negotiate with terrorists. Yes, that, was, yes. That, that was perfect. You can't deal with monsters. And thank you so much for reminding us that one of the things you told me in, in the q and I did with you, you should understand the settings that the whole system worked against Navalny, where yes. FSS, okay, FSB, always work to separate any unity, community, union. We are experiencing that in America, where anything that was any good, that's ever any good, uh, there's always an effort to destroy it and wedge it apart. And that is really important. Yes, go ahead. Can I say one thing? Yes, please. It's, it's about the craziness. And it was 2007. Uh, I was a member of a local Animeca community club. We watch animes, you know, and we gather together each week, each week uh, at Sunday at the same place, public place uh, in front of statue uh, uh, it's in the downtown, you know, and because we regularly meet there during one, two years and many young people, different generation, people's uh, police start asking uh, questions to us. Why are you gathering here, you know? And uh, we just explain them that we are f uh, fans of anime club, you know, we watch anime, we discuss life, we just friends who meet each other and uh, it's predictable events in our schedule, you know, and uh, police was not satisfied with, with our answer. They, after one week, they uh, maybe two weeks, they came again to our meeting place and start asking us again, you know, and it's like they don't trust different people who say the same thing, you know? And why are you asking just people? It's just anime fan club, you know? And any kind of unity, any kind of unity, it, it, it doesn't, it shouldn't be related with politics. This is level of control at 2007, before Putin was uh, harsh with many of Russian opposition, yes. but he suppressed uh, football uh, fans, I don't know how to say, some nationalists, because yeah. they, they died in the prisons. No, he's just put them in the prisons. They died in the prisons, you know? And um, uh, I just, it's questionable. I, want, I, I was I want, a nationalist, you know? But it's also like the ring bell for, for many. I, but, but I also understand your passion of just wanting better for your people. And I'm very grateful again uh, for you reminding us that we have to be vigilant about our unity, our community, our kindness, moral leadership, our support for Ukraine, our support for democracy. We can't take any of it for granted. And I am so grateful again that you came and that you were here with us today, Dimitri. Mm -hmm. And uh, please, uh, you know, stay safe, stay well, and you know, come back and visit us again as things progress. Thank you so much. God bless you guys.